Hello everyone, remember me? <laughs> Welcome uh, back to another episode of Book Time with Elvis, with me Mark. And Elvis is here, uh, kind of next to me, just having a little bit of a, a sleep. We just got back from a walk. I'll just see if I can show him to you. There he is, yeah. Sleeping away. <laughs> oh, sorry for the shaky camera work there uh yes so i'm back uh it's been a bit of a while i guess um i'm not sure how long exactly i didn't really look but it's probably close to three three weeks maybe maybe even more um i'm yeah it's just been it's just been a bit of a crazy time i wasn't feeling too well i had um i had a spring break uh back at the uh, last week of uh, February, and I thought, oh yeah, great! I'll have lots of time to 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 read uh, and make uh, and make videos. Uh, but as I say, I wasn't feeling too good. Uh, and then, um, then obviously, um, you know, certain events happened um, in 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 Ukraine, um, which you know, although don't affect me. Uh, of course, uh, you know, I'm still re reasonably far away. I'm certainly much further away than, um, well, certainly much further away than, from Russia, at least, than, than, say, Jim, for example, at Jim Books Reading and Stuff. I'm further away from the um, Ukrainian border than, than, than Becky at uh, Teacup Storyteller, for example, although I hope uh, or believe she, she might be in Scotland, so then she's actually further away than I am. Uh, I'm about, what, 600 kilometers from the border with Ukraine, um, 350 miles, something like that, um, which, you know, isn't super far, uh, but of course I am in a NATO country, uh, I don't expect anything to happen. Um, we've been af affected, of course, uh, because, uh, you know, we are, the Czech Republic is a former um you know, communist uh, country that was behind the Iron Curtain. It has some very bad experiences uh, with with Russia. Um, so the feeling here is 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 quite, um, I would say, charged with with um, definite sympathy um, and empathy for 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 the people of Ukraine. Uh, we're not getting the huge influx of refugees as, of course, the immediate neighbors are getting. Uh, but we have a few. We have around 5,000 arriving uh, every day. Um, I was at one of the Minister Ministry of the Interior offices uh, earlier this week because I had to um, exchange my residency document uh, for a biometric card because of because of Brexit. It's uh, just a new rule now, as I'm no longer in the European Union. Uh, and while I was there, uh, you know, there was quite a few. Um, well, when we went in, there were a couple of uh, Ukrainian people there. And then by the time we left, there was quite a crowd. Um, when we started back at school on, on, on the Monday, last Monday after the spring break, um, our headmaster, who also happens to be a senator in the uh, Czech uh, government, um, was discussing the situation and how, of course, we should speak to the children regarding what was going on uh, to alleviate their concerns. Um, and uh, also there's been, you know, a lot of fundraising. Uh, we've given uh, money uh, to help, um, especially people connected to the school who are taking in uh, refugees from, from uh, the war in Ukraine. Um, in fact, we have, I think, maybe five or six children possibly starting uh, tomorrow at our school who have come from there uh, and we're currently also looking for uh, a Ukrainian speaking uh, teacher. Uh, luckily the Ukrainian language and the Czech language are not so you know they're not poles apart and I think uh, children being children will adapt very quickly and get get a hold on the Czech language certainly much faster than I've uh, been able to up to now. But you know, it's been a, it's been a tough situation. I've I've done, um, you know, I've kind of been my own worst enemy as well regarding it. As I, I got obsessed with with the news, um, 
Stephanie Cohen said to me, uh, it's called doom scrolling, and I thought that was a fantastic expression, and I've definitely been guilty of that. Um, and it's it's impacted on my my sleep and things because of course you know I wake up in the night and I'm like oh I must check Twitter and see see what's happened um, and so it's kind of you know I haven't um, I haven't done any reading really um, every time I sit down and try to read um, I find myself uh, distracted and I can't concentrate uh, certainly that was the case. Uh, in, in in the last week or so, things have got a bit better uh, from from Friday onwards. Uh, I've been able to um, do a bit more reading, and it brings me, I suppose, to uh, one book I'll mention that I hope to finish in the next day or so, uh, which I was reading with uh, Stephanie Cohen and Vin from Revenant Reads, which is this uh, the landmark Thucydides. Uh, which is really good. Um, I won't. I'll talk about it later once I've finished. But uh, this is certainly something I want to get uh, read. And I started a lot of books in February. I mean, uh, January was uh, January was uh, you know I hit the ground running when January started. I think I read around twelve different books in February. I actually only really finished to uh, managed to finish one. Um, which uh, was excellent, although I had started probably uh, around six or seven. Um, the one I finished, uh, I would really recommend, actually. Um, I'm trying to bring it up here on the uh, the tablet because I read it um, as an ebook. Um, it is The Hunters by... Uh, James Salter. Here it is, The Hunters by James Salter. I don't know if any of you have read it. Uh, if you haven't, um, then I suggest read it. It's excellent. It's not very long. Uh, it is a war novel uh, set in the Korean War about uh, fighter pilots. Of course, I'm sure everybody is a bit worn out uh, and might not necessarily want to uh, read such such a thing at this moment in time, uh, which is perfectly understandable. Uh, it is, um, many ways, an anti-war uh, novel. Salter himself was uh, also a member of the United States Air Force in the Korean War, just like his main character. And um, it's a beautifully written book, and it's quite disturbing in the way that you see uh, the main character's kind of self-destruction through his obsession with trying to um, become an ace. That means shooting down five uh, enemy uh, planes. It is uh, really quite, yeah, beautiful, haunting, and um, well worth reading if you have uh, an interest in um, psychology as well as, uh, you know, um, the human side of of, of war so yeah there we go um and this month um i am trying to catch up of course with the other things i haven't finished reading but i've also started uh, my two mammoths this month uh, i'm hosting along with noah and everyone who reads it must converse a read along of shogun by james clavel um i'm only around three chapters in it is a reread for me uh but i've forgotten how uh, fast paced it is how uh well obviously i knew it was enjoyable i wouldn't have suggested to reread it but uh I've forgotten just how enjoyable uh, a read it is despite its um quite often uh brutal uh aspects and um you know the the the, the severe culture clash between uh, europeans and japanese during this uh, during this era but that's uh, yeah shogun by James Clavell, and the other mammoth, which I have really only just read, uh, again, uh, the prologue and the first chapter so far is uh, Don Quixote. I'm reading uh, the Penguin translation. I'm not actually reading this copy. I'm reading it on um, on the Kindle because, of course, it's much easier to read uh, in bed or whatever, but uh, it is a nice edition, this one anyway. So that's that. And uh, let's see. Uh, during the spring break, I did manage to uh, visit 
the uh, builders because uh, those of you who watch this channel are aware that I am planning to build a house and while I was there I was able to go to the bookshop and I did pick up a couple of books uh, which I think would be quite uh, good. Uh, the first one is uh, by Tolkien and it's Sir Gawain and the uh, Green Knight also with the Pearl and Sir Orfeo uh, which I think will be uh, very good and the other one is also by Tolkien and it is um, the Lord of the Rings in, in one edition here and it's quite a nice uh, edition uh, you know it's got those um, French flaps or whatever and I would say uh, it's not too small uh, in the print if you can see maybe uh, you know I've got my glasses on so probably it's deceiving me a little bit but yeah it's quite nice and I think um, you know, I'm, I haven't read the whole thing before, which I'm quite disgusted in myself at. I think I only read The Fellowship of the Ring, uh, so I really do need to read the whole thing. And, you know, depending on how I do get on with it, um, I would like to buy, of course, a really nice, uh, nice edition of it. But I think this is good to be going along with. And the other one I bought is a historical fiction and a thriller mystery uh, which is by Laura Shepard Robinson, and it's called Blood and Sugar, and it's about um, a murder uh, and to do with slavery um, in late 18th century England. Um, excuse me, and uh, yeah, it just seems uh, seems pretty good. Um, you know, June 1781, an unidentified body hangs upon a hook in Deptford Dock horribly tortured and branded with a slaver's mark. Some days later, Captain Henry, sorry, Harry Corsham, a war hero embarking upon a promising parliamentary career, is visited by the sister of an old friend. Her brother, passionate abolitionist Tad Archer, had been about to expose a secret that he believed could cause irreparable damage to the British slaving industry. He'd said people were trying to kill him, and now he is missing. Um, so yeah, and uh, there's two bits of blurb, uh, one at the top here, a uh, page turner of a crime thriller, and also this one here, um, this is a wonderful, uh, sorry, this is a world conveyed with convincing, terrible clarity, and both of those are by uh, C.J. Sansom, who wrote the Shard Lake books, which are a fantastic series of um Tudor-based historical fiction, uh, and, you know, obviously getting his endorsement uh, was uh, a big attraction for me, so that's kind of uh, let me, uh, one of the reasons I decided to give this book a go uh, is because of that. And finally, um, I just should say, because YouTube told me about it this morning, that this is my one-year anniversary, uh, or our, I should say, our one-year anniversary on uh, on booktube on youtube uh the one year anniversary of this channel uh i couldn't really believe it i couldn't believe that time had gone uh so quickly and it just really uh remains for me to say thank you thank you everybody who's uh supported this channel by uh watching it uh, watching the content um commenting liking the videos etc subscribing of course uh i'm around uh, 430 um, 36, I think I looked this morning, it's probably gone down, it always does when I release a video, uh, so it's 430 something, uh, subscribers after a year, which is, uh, to be honest, probably more than I, uh, expected, uh, the thought that there are 430 odd people out there who, uh, watch me and, uh, care about what I say is, is really quite humbling, and, um, yeah, I thank you all very much for that. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to the next year. Uh, I do have a lot of plans, um, though, as I say, life has kind of gotten in the way at times with embarking on them. I won't talk about them too much in case they don't come into fruition for a while, uh, but hopefully it will be something that, um, you know, you'll all enjoy anyway. So thank you again, really, from the bottom uh, of our hearts that you've taken um the time to watch uh, this channel. Uh, certainly, Elvis and I have enjoyed this year. A lot's happened. I've made some fantastic 
uh, friends. You know, I may not have met them in real life, but uh, I do regard them uh, as friends, and I certainly speak to them uh, more than I do a lot of people. And um, you know, some very special uh, friendships and relationships as well. Um, and you know, it's been overwhelmingly uh, positive, and I've enjoyed. Uh, every every minute of it so hopefully it won't be too long before I'm back with you but I, I thought at least I could give you this kind of little update uh, as you as you certainly deserve it uh, and it's the least I could do for you but uh, as I say given how things go next week uh, obviously with some of these new children uh, joining us I will I will update you on it because I think it's a very interesting uh, situation and I'm sure you know it will be challenging but also um rewarding and, and, and worthwhile. So everybody do take care of yourselves and um, yeah, try to try to remain positive. You know, uh, I'm certainly doing my best to take care everybody. All the best from us. Bye bye.